Hi everyone. In this lesson, we will learn about intermodal transport. It contains four parts, including intermodal transport, China intermodal transportation infrastructure, One Belt One Road, and China policies in improving the road network transportation. First of all. What is intermodal transport? The intermodal transport defined as the concept of transporting passengers and freight on two or more different transport modes, in which a way that all parts of the transportation process, including the exchange of information, are efficient, connected, and coordinated. The benefits of intermodal transport are as follows: shorten freight transport time by reducing cargo handling, enhance security by decreasing damages and losses, save cost over road trucking for intercontinent use. It is not until the 20th century that true forms of intermodalism could be set. The emergency of intermodal transportation system is the outcome of several phases involving the application of key technologies, operational improvements, and regulation changes. The figure shows major steps in the intermodal integration. The first step is inventing intermodalism. The first significant intermodal no innovation. Were pallets handled by forklifts. The second is setting intermodal standards. An important step was the standardization of container size and latching system in the late 1960s. The third step is the operationalizing intermodalism. The 1980s. The onset of rail deregulation it enabled railways to reorganize their service along the more commercially driven imperatives. The fourth is setting massification and automation of intermodalism. By the 1990s, ships larger than the standard Panamax design began to introduce. By the 2000s, electronic bell of lading system enable more efficient handling of the crucial documentation related to the intermodalism, enabling intermodal transport to become increasing use. As shown in the figure, this system is organized as follows: the nature and quantity of transport cargo. Intermodal transportation is usually suitable for the intermediate and finished goods in load units less than 25 tons. The sequence of transportation modes begin used. The dominant modes are traveling, rail, bargain, and maritime. The origins and destinations, distance. About 500 kilometers usually require intermodal transportation. The value of the cargo is suitable for intermediate cargo values. The frequency of shipments, cargo flows need to continuous and in similar quantities. When above conditions are satisfied. The application of intermodal transport can lead to a set of outcomes, as shown in the figure. It can reduce total transportation costs, mostly because of the benefits of the economies of scale over transport market. A model shift towards mods having a higher capacity and efficiency. Each mod tends to be used for the con. Conditions for which it is the most suitable. Intermodalism requires the consolidation 
and the consolidation of load units into large batches and composition. A high load factor with more full truckload transport as well as a high level of asset utilization. Changing the network structure of freight transportation with intermodalism usually results in less empty backhauls for vehicles. Intermodalism transportation is organized as a sequence models, often shown as an intermodal transport chain and shown in the figure. The first one is composition. The process of assembling and consolidation freight at a terminal that offers an intermodal interface between a local distribution system and a national distribution system. It is commonly referred to the first mile. The first to second one is the connection. Involves a consolidated model flow such as at freight train and container ship between at least two terminals, which takes place over national and international freight distribution system. 3. Interchange. The major intermodal function takes place at terminals whose purpose is to provide an efficient commodity within a transport chain. The fourth step is decomposition. Once a load of freight has reached a terminal close to a destination, it must be fragmented and transferred to the local freight distribution system, commonly referred to as the last mile, and often represented by the most difficult segment of distribution. A variety of equipment can be used to perform intermodal operations at a, a terminal as shown in the figure. The choice of equipment is related to a number of factors. In terms of capital investment, volume, stacking density, and productivity. Forklift, hoist the truck, schedule carrier, front end loader, rich stacker, rubber tile gantry, rail mounted gantry. Different equipments have different features. Forklift can be considered as the most basic piece of intermodal equipment. Hoistler truck presented a low capital investment and can move a container at a high speed. Straddle carrier can be used for all intermodal operation. Front end loader can be used for double stack intermodal operations. Rich stacker is also a flexible piece of equipment performing intermodal operations for rail and trucks as well as the stacking of the containers. RTG has a higher acquisition cost but lower operational cost and it fits well regularly container yard operation. RMG is a fixed piece of intermodal equipment that is wide span and can be used for intermodal operations over 6 to 10 rail tracks. This is the relationship between transport cost distance and model choice. Transport mod have different cost function according to the service distance using a simple linear distance effect. Road, rail, and maritime transport can be respectively as a C1, C2, and C3 cost function. While well, a road transport has a lower cost for distance, its cost increase faster than the rail and maritime cost. At a distance D1, it becomes more profitable to use rail transport 
than the road transport. Well, from a distant detour, merit transport becomes more efficient. These are preferred to as break-even distance. Point D1 is generally located between 500 kilometers and 750 kilometers of the point of departure. Well, D2 is nearly 1,500 kilometers. The intermodal transportation cost implies the consideration of several types of transportation for routing the freight from its origin to its destination. The figure shows intermodal cost function, where CT is the intermodal transport cost, CCP is the composition cost, CEN is the connection cost. CL is the interchange cost. CDC is the decomposition cost. In this figure, in the model transport, cost between an origin and its destination and using an intermediate transportation mode point. For the different cost, connected and interchange cost are related to the national or the international distribution cost. They can involve truck moving from a warehouse to a port or a terminal handling and loading them on a ship. Composition and decomposition costs are related to local or regional distribution costs such as packaging and handling consignments in a distribution center or final deliveries to customers. The following infrastructures, construction of a railway, road, airports, ports is the support of China's intermodal transportation development. The figure shows China infrastructure overview. In China, the total length of railway is 121,000 kilometers. The total length of the high-speed railway is over 23,600 kilometers. The total length of the road is 4,500,000 kilometers. And the total length of the expressway is 131,000 kilometers. Besides, there are 76 intermodal airports and 335 civil airports. China has seven of the top 10 parts by cargo volume. The figure shows China export and import heavy containers volume and water rail penetration of the major points. In 2017, it is shown that China intermodal transport has developed rapidly recently. The scale of water rail mode grew rapidly in 2018, and it would reach 8.5 MTEU by 2020. From January to May in 2018, national ports have complete 1.75 million TEUs of water rail transportation. Optimistic forecast. In 2020, China's container what rail transport market demand is 8.5 MTEUs. The figure shows the development condition of the road rail and water rail in China in comparison to US and European. The figure shows that China long distance rail freight will be transferred to railways and waterways to achieve intermodal transport. Road rail transport, water rail transport will be the main intermodal transport. We can get from it that road rail and water rail are mainstream, but penetration rate is low compared to the US and the European world. Recently, China's One Belt, One Road initiative has been frequently mentioned. 
One Belt One Road as a global version of China Intermodal Network. The figure shows piece of China's One Belt One Road initiative. One Belt One Road is developing rapidly. One Belt One Road infrastructure process show that in terms of railway transport, nearly 7,000 trains run in the Central Europe, with 57 lines running, 75 domestic cities, and 34 cities in 12 countries in the Europe. China's civil aviation and direct flights to 43 countries along the line, foreign airlines newly opened 18 national roads along the belt. It also shows that 3% of flight in China is by intermodal transport in 2016, and 6% of the overall flight would be transported by intermodal by 2020. By 2020, market scale for intermodal transportation would reach 400 billion RMB. Of course, market scale for intermodal transport has made great process under one belt, one road. The figure shows in 2016 China freight market size by transportation mode and China's intermodal transportation. China has a lot of policy support to improve the network and transportation. In terms of improving and policies and regulations, in main policies are media and long-term planning for the logistic industry. Notice on innovation, national intermodal transport pilot project, guidance on promoting healthy development and China Railway Express. Drafting on recommendation on promoting intermodal transport development. Drafting on building techniques and standards of system in intermodal. In terms of promote healthy development, the main policies are integrated planning on CR Express, strengthen the collaboration among domestic government and official, facilitation of customers clearance, build international rules for intermodal transport. The figure is large logistic channels and noise layout. It shows the developments of the intermodal network in China. By 2020, China will set up 11 large logistic channels. Strategic composition of large logistic channels, intermodal transportation corridor for across region long distance high distance cargoes channel network includes 85 logistic nodes 23 national backbone intermodal hub 21 regional key intermodal hub and 11 land side border ports containerization has changed the world previously ships would hold multiple smaller loads all jumbled together into a cargo hold now the sorting of cargo into containers is done before the cargo is loaded. This allows ships to have greater efficiency when loading and unloading cargo. But it has also brought new challenges for organization as gigantic ships dock in large ports and need to unload hundreds or thousands of containers at a time. Container terminals are hubs of intermodal transport. That means that containers are switching modes of transport from a ship which travels on the sea, to either road or rail. Containers can also be moved by air, but this is not usually the focus of container ports. Switching modes of transport is not quite as simple as loading a cargo container from a ship onto a truck. Multiple steps and organizational challenges are involved before the container rolls out of the freight yard. First, the container must be unloaded from the ship. This is achieved with huge gantry cranes that are able to lift the several tons of container and its cargo. Cranes can be hinged to allow for passage of large ships beneath, or can be fixed to reduce airspace being taken up. Cranes connect to containers by their corner fittings, which, like most other parts of a container, are standardised throughout the world by the International Organisation for Standardisation. 
Another international standard is the unique identifier number, which helps to keep track of each container. The containers are typically loaded onto terminal tractors. These funny looking trucks are meant for short distance haulage in order to get the container from beside the ship into the storage yard where the containers wait to be picked up by a truck or a train. In order to move containers around a storage yard and onto trucks and trains, there are several options for machinery. Two of the most interesting are reach stackers and rubber tyre gantries. Rubber tyre gantries have wheels and are cranes that are able to fully straddle containers. Larger versions may run on tracks rather than tyres and can straddle multiple rows of containers. Reach stackers have a long arm that can easily be used to stack containers several rows deep or to negotiate them onto semi-trailers and rail cars. Every step of the process described so far has the capacity to be fully or semi-automated and in fact at some of the terminals at the port of Rotterdam in the Netherlands, they all are, at least partially. At this port, a crane operator remotely operates the gantry crane via computer software that unloads containers from a ship. The container is loaded onto a fully automated terminal truck, which drives it to the storage area to be unloaded by an automated stacker crane. This is one area where logical planning augmented by computers can provide a huge benefit. Knowing exactly what date and time a container needs to be picked up, a computer can plan the most efficient way to stack containers. This ensures the container isn't buried too deep in the stacks when it comes time to leave the yard, reducing the number of operations required to access the required container. There are still some storage yards around the world that use a paper-based tracking system. For some of these yards, this means that containers are simply stacked according to when they are brought into the storage yard, so that when the time comes to take them out again, they might be at the bottom of a stack of containers. Like many other industries, computerized automation provides some unique benefits over human operation, such as accuracy of repetitive tasks and logical planning of efficient processes. Until something goes wrong, and many hours are spent trying to troubleshoot and fix the issue. For now at least, humans maintain the advantage of adaptability over fully automated machines. Automating a container port is very expensive, but ports implementing this technology hope to gain benefits such as increased productivity and increased safety. Of course, even at ports where automation exists, humans are still employed to oversee and maintain the machines rectify problems as they arise. Okay, that's all for today's class and thank you for joining us. See you next week.